have a little one that you desire to see grow in the things of God? Subscribe to Revive Nations Kids on YouTube for an exciting array of programs every week. ReviveNations.tv is now open to live participation to our services. Please, people of God, help me celebrate the lover of my soul. Open your Bibles to the Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 6, verse 7, and verse 8. Thank you, Prophet. Song of Songs, chapter 3, verse 6, 7, and 8. Mm -hmm. Who is this that cometh out of the wilderness uh, like pillars of smoke, uh, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense? with all powders of the merchant. Behold his bed, which is Solomon's three score. Valiant men are about it, of the valiant of Israel. They all hold swords, being expert in war. Every man hath his sword upon his thigh, because of fear in the night. All right. And I'll go one more time, just the first line. Who is this that cometh out of the wilderness? Uh -huh. So somebody is coming out of the wilderness this year. This 2023, I want to declare to the nations that are joining us from around the world, the heart of God is that He's taking you out of the wilderness. He's taking you into the promised land. Amen. He's taking you from a place of transition to a place of identity. Amen. Uh, if I may borrow the words of my father, God is taking you to a place of functioning from being a human being is taking you to become a God being. He's taking you to a place of transition. This is the year that the Lord says, you shall come out. You shall transition. You shall come out of the tunnel. I prophesy that you are coming through. What hindered you last year will have no power over Amen. you this year. Amen. Where is the groom coming out from? The groom is coming out of the wilderness. What is the heart of the groom? What is the goal of the groom? The Lord says, I don't want you to be in the wilderness. This is not my will for you. This is not my pleasure for you. Where God wants you to be is out of the wilderness. He wants you out and He wants you free. He wants you in your elements. There is some people that have been captured in a wilderness in their minds. There are some people that are captured in the wilderness of their heart. I stand as a mouthpiece of God and I declare rain over your desert. I stand as a vessel sent by the Lord and I declare that this desert shall turn into a garden. Because the groom is not coming for a wedding party in the desert. It is the heart of the groom to bring you out of your wilderness. Let me assure you something. Some of you think that you are blessed. <laughs> you think you are blessed because there was a time you could not afford a certain shoe that you desired. Now you are able to afford two. There was a time you couldn't buy that thing that you really liked but now you're even able to buy that and some more accessories with it <laughs> so you think you are blessed 
but the real definition of blessing is not what you think the real definition of blessing is what whether you groom things you are blessed you say you are blessed blessed according to whom uh, you say you have no needs my god shall provide all your needs according to whose riches so when you say you don't have no needs according to whose standard are you talking about when you say you are blessed according to whose standard who told you uh, who told you that you were blessed who told you that you were rich who told you that you have arrived who told you that you don't have needs there are needs that you have that you don't even know that you need <laughs> there are dimensions of god's blessing that you have not even tapped yet because you don't know it exists there are certain blessings that is out there you don't even know you need it because you don't know it exists so there is a greater standard of glory that god is releasing his bride there is a greater standard of dominion god is releasing over his bride there is a greater standard of his presence god is releasing over bride if only the bride can stop saying that they don't need anything anymore if only the bride can stop measuring herself according to her own standards and if the bride can now look at herself and say do i am i dressed enough for my king do i have enough ornaments from my king do i have enough jewels that represent my king do i have the right crown that represents my king do i have an entourage that represents my king do i have a chariot that represents my king mari prosete bralanda you are considering yourself blessed according to the standards of a broken father and a broken biological mother while that was never your standard the standard god is raising up his people to the standard of the king of glory when they looked at the groom coming it is a reference to how you should be coming what you are is not far from who you are connected to you plugged to how do you know that you're fully plugged into something now you function in the fullness of that something you function in that grace you function in the image and you function in the likeness and what flows there is also flowing through you and there is an endless supply of grace wisdom mercy favor flows through you if it is not flowing through you you are just a stone plugged in current is not flowing through you you are not a good conductor of that grace so this year i pray that you will be a good conductor of the grace and that you will look like your groom yes. huh? so how is the groom looking like how is the groom looking like he is coming out of the wilderness okay and he says that there is columns of what pillars of what like pillars of smoke Paul. smoke he is coming with pillars of smoke doesn't make sense another version says columns of smoke another version says a cloud of smoke so that means then when the groom is coming 
at a distance is coming out of wilderness that whole sand dunes are stirred up huh? the hoofs of the horses and the wheels of the chariot are creating enough motion that it stirs up the environment it is coming around and now the environment is creating a certain kind of a, a invisible zone so you don't see the chariot you don't see the riders you don't see the horses you don't see the wheels all you see is a cloud of smoke coming <laughs> hear me some of you are going to confuse your enemy this year because when the enemy looks at you he is going to misjudge you as just a bunch of smoke they're going to look at you and not realize that this was an intentional setup that now there is a certain dominion that causes you to create a certain momentum that crosses a certain a protection even in your environment now the environment starts waking up to do your job your environment now starts participating in your security your environment now becomes it starts your environment starts responding to you what was supposed to kill you will now start protecting you i'll tell you this for some people this will be foolishness it is supposed to be foolishness that is the objective this is just smoke so keep thinking it is smoke but some of you in the days to come in the months to come you're going to realize when some people think this is smoke while they think this is nothing while they think ah this is just noise you will be making progress and uh, that environment where everyone writes you off and this is nothing this is a small movement this is small noise you will be using that as a stealth mode and you will be progressing to certain locations that you never thought god is about to use your environment for your favor listen to me what killed many people will not kill you i'm hearing that one more time this is a season where you have to stop praying deliver me from the environment and now demons there are going to pray that they are delivered from you there is one such grace that is one such grace i know what i'm talking about because what i'm talking about is a reality in the spirit realm in the reality in the spirit realm because in the spirit realm you too just like your groom because if the groom is coming with chariots if the groom is coming with horses and horsemen and soldiers then which king in his senses will not offer the same protection to his queen which king ah. which king this is why this is why i told you this year has to be all about renewing a mind so if we can manage that on the first of the year yeah. <laughs> the next 12 months no matter what the environment looks like you are not going to say help me man of god 
instead you're going to turn that environment to your favor let me declare that your wilderness shall work for you daniel's can be in the babylon and he shall be promoted about all the black magicians above all the sort he did not come and say lord kill all the witches please kill all the black magicians no 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 i shall be your boss don't worry about don't worry about your your environment i'm going to repeat what i said last night that is why i said last night's word you have to re listen to it maybe three times at least you are going to outgrow your problems 2023 you are going to outgrow your problems that which you thought is a problem is not going to be a problem as this word comes into your spirit you can help me here huh? when elijah was taken up how was he taken up <laughs> you all read your bible well i appreciate that one more time louder you're wrong yeah uh, let's pull up the west uh, cuz you're all staring at me you have in when i got yes prophet second kings chapter 2 verse 11 aha uh-huh. and it came to pass uh-huh. as they still went on uh-huh. and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and uh, parted them both asunder they parted them and then the, he sat on the chariot and no oh sorry what, what is your web say and Elijah went up by a whirlwind oh oh so chariot he left back for whom You see how we read a bible. Yes. We fill in the gaps with just mental imagination. And that is why we don't have spiritual power. Because we are not led by reality, we are led by imaginations. He was not taken up to heaven by chariots of horses of fire. He was taken up by a whirlwind. Yes. Yeah. Huh? chariots of horses and and horsemen of fire was not to go up it was for assistance on earth so for those of you that are reading song of solomon and like yeah but that's the king no 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 you forgot who you are you are anointed as a king that means who do you have you too have chariots and horses and horsemen of fire but we have not tapped into those dimensions so what am i doing as i'm teaching you there are realities that have come manifesting because now certain information are tied to understanding you cannot have certain access to a dimension until that revelation comes to you but when something is revealed it becomes yours so i don't know how many of you listening to me are ready to make this dimension yours because some of you think ah no. <laughs> you're rolling your eyes take it easy go to sleep you need a break but there are some other people their spirit is is stirring up because you are saying god how did i work all this time without it because you see when when the chariots and the horses of fire appeared when i got what they were doing was they were separating elijah and elisha before it was with them both because you will hear at one point when the servant's eyes are opened later on when elisha says open his eyes oh he will see chariots of fire and 
forces of fire that were surrounding the prophet. Not the servant, but the prophet. So two of you can walk together and one can have it and the other don't have it. And yet you think you both are in same location and yet spiritually you both are in two different locations. Thank you, prophet. I found in 2 Kings chapter 6, uh-huh. verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes uh-huh. that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. The servant was on the same mountain. It wasn't around him. But it was around Elisha. So some two people can walk together and one not have a certain grace that the other person. Yet by proximity they were together. Oh may God save you from such a disaster that you're walking with your man of God and you don't have access to the grace that is on him. That is a terrible disaster. But I don't think that was the same with Elisha and Elijah. Ah, because Elisha was not just a servant, he was a son. With Elisha, he didn't have the capacity to develop a son. So when he died, he carried the anointing to his grave. But Elijah had a son. He was a servant and he was a son. A real son is a servant first. (laughs) It's very dangerous to have a son who doesn't understand servantship. Uh, It's very dangerous to have a servant who is not a son. Because when Jezebel comes, the servant will be the first to come with resignation saying, "Ah, Prophet, it was a pleasure serving you but I got a new job because I'm, I'm hearing you're under attack so I don't want to die with you but the son he does not jump the ship when his father is attacked he knows this is what I was called for this is what I was born for Ah, this is my calling to extend the life of my father so that he can remain in my generation and be a blessing a little longer. Then Elijah, you can't replace. There is no replacement to Elijah. You are the next Elijah. There's no replacement. So a real son knows that. He says, if I can get Papa to hang around me for a little longer, so I'm going to do everything until the chariots and the horses said, nah, you guys are too much. Just get out, get out of the way and separated, created a separation. Separ- so the chariots of fire was creating an escape for Elijah to leave. Because as long as the chariots were with them, these guys are going to live for a long time. So prophetically, spiritually, he was separating two dimensions so that Elijah now had the permission to be carried off by the whirlwind. And the Bible does not say the chariots went up with them. That is your cartoon network uh, (laughs) Bible story animation. The chariots. No, no, no. They stayed with Elijah. Because whoever is making these cartoons, you know, they don't have the revelation to understand that Elijah now carried the chariots. Are you following what I'm saying? If your king is coming out with chariots of fire, can you realize that the same level of grace is being imparted to you? Now he wants you to carry the chariots of fire, go into locations. You will have greater authority over principalities, not because now you fasted for 40 days, not because you stood upside down, hey, but because just that your arrival was the arrival of a cloud that came along with you, that had chariots of fire with you. 
demons that were fighting you had no other option but to bow down to the grace of God. Yeah. Hello, hello. Welcome to Revive Nations TV. We are so glad that you are here. Thank you once again for joining us and being part of this Jesus journey with us. I hope you've been having a wonderful new year so far. And I hope that this word that you have heard has blessed you immensely and has encouraged you and has uplifted your spirits. Write to us and let us know where you're watching from. And we would love for you to join us on our social media platforms. Thank you to all our financial supporters that has helped us to reach this word across the nations. Until we meet again, remember to stay under the mighty hand of God. God bless you all and Shalom. Many of us love Jesus by our words, Facebook posts and scripture quotes. But when God wanted to show us how much he loved us, he gave up his only begotten son. He is not looking for part-time Christians, nor a portion of surrender, or a fraction of obedience. He is waiting for us to empty ourselves. He is not asking us for some things. He is asking us for everything. And Jesus is the only person who has the right to ask us for everything because He gave us everything. Distance is not a barrier to God. RevivedNations.tv is now open to live participation to our services. 